Okay, so now let's look at the big O of graphs. So we're gonna represent this graph as an adjacency matrix and an adjacency list. And then we're gonna look at the difference in big O for doing various things with an adjacency matrix versus an adjacency list. So the first thing we're gonna look at is space complexity. So with an adjacency list, we're gonna store the vertex and the edges. Now I'm gonna highlight these two edges, B and E, in the adjacency matrix over here in green. We are gonna store those, but with an adjacency matrix, we are also storing everything that A is not connected to. You have to store both. So that makes the adjacency matrix very inefficient when it comes to space complexity. So let's look at what the space complexity is on each one. So for the adjacency matrix on the left, it is the number of vertices squared. So we have five vertices, we have 25 entries here. Whereas with the adjacency list, you can see we are storing all of the vertices and then all of the edges. So it's the vertices plus the edges. And that's the space complexity of the adjacency list. Now let's bring back our graph. If we're going to add a vertex, let's look at how we do this in each one of these. We'll start with the adjacency list. If we're going to add a vertex, we're just going to slide it in like that. So it's very easy to do with an adjacency list. Now let's look at the adjacency matrix. We have to change the matrix to look like this. It would be the equivalent of having to create a new matrix. So when we look at the time complexity, it is the number of vertices squared for the matrix, but it's O of one for an adjacency list. Okay, so let's bring our diagram back here. And if we wanna create an edge between B and F like that, let's look at each of these starting with the list Remember, this is between B and F. We just push something onto this array, the F onto that array, and we push a B into this array. Okay, so now let's look at the matrix. With the matrix, we're gonna change this value here. We're gonna change this value here. It's also very simple with the matrix. So the big O on each of these is O of one. Let's bring back our diagram here. And let's say we want to remove the edge. We'll look at these starting with the list first. Remember that edge was between B and F. So we're going to start at B and we're going to have to go completely through that array and look for an F. And that array can be pretty large. A particular vertex can be connected to a lot of items. And we're going to have to iterate through that array to find the value that we're looking for and remove it. Then we're gonna to have to do the same thing for F and we only have one value here, but once again, there could be a lot of values. We have to find B and remove that. With an adjacency matrix, we're just gonna go here, change that to zero, go here, change that to zero. So the advantage on this one actually goes to the adjacency matrix, it's O of one versus O of the number of edges that we would have to iterate through on the adjacency list. Let's bring back our diagram again. The next thing that we can look at is removing a vertex. Let's bring these both back up. We'll start with this one. So it's very easy to remove this vertex like this. The problem is, is you have to go into each vertex like this and say, hey, in the list of edges that I have, do I have any Fs? Then you go into this one, and then you say, in this list of vertices, do I have any Fs in here? And you're going to have to touch every vertex, every edge, to be able to remove all of those Fs. Now, if you have bidirectional, there is a shortcut that you can use to make this a little bit more efficient. But still, you're going to have to go and look at a lot of different vertices and iterate through the arrays with the edges. With a matrix, when you remove this, it is gonna be also very inefficient. It's gonna be O of V squared. With the adjacency list, it's O of V plus E. So you're gonna to have to touch 
every one of these, which is going to be better than the adjacency matrix. Now let's do another comparison on these. So I want to talk a little bit more about this adjacency matrix. As we discussed before, not only are you storing all of the ones, you're also storing all of the zeros. And the larger this gets, the bigger the problem becomes having to store all of this. So imagine this, your Facebook, and let's say you have a billion users just to use a nice round number. And you're going to have a matrix that is a billion across the top and a billion down the side. Even if each person in Facebook had a thousand friends, the number of zeros in this matrix would outnumber the ones a million to one. And that's a lot of zeros to store. So it's very inefficient when this becomes very large. And that is why we are going to use an adjacency list in this course. It's a lot more efficient. It's a lot simpler to code. All right, that is our overview of graphs, big O.